East Burnage. Not the end of the world, but it's got the same pulse cold, if you know what I mean. Hello, love. Hello, how are you? Everything all, all right? Yeah. Lovely day, eh? Yeah. yeah. You can't wish for better. Scruffy bastards. Burnage Council Estate, South Manchester. This is Oasis Territory, where Liam and Noel Gallagher were brought up. It's also home to one of the highest crime rates in the country, where one in six of the residents have a criminal record. However, since community support officers were first introduced five years ago, things have started to change. As to the question of whether CSO should be trained to carry firearms, not on my watch. Of course we should be trained up to carry guns. And it's not going to take long, is it? How long can it take to learn to pull a trigger? It's not rocket science. And if they're not going to let us carry guns, at the very least, we should be allowed to carry knives. Vince Flanagan, an ex-car park attendant, is one of the longest-serving community support officers in Burnage. He's been patrolling the area since April 2002, when community support officers were first introduced nationally to work alongside the regular police force. Today, he's joined by new recruit Duncan Harding, a former assistant stock taker for Argus Stores. Duncan's just completed his three-week training course, and from today onwards, will be Vince's new partner. We work hand in hand with the local constabulary, helping them out when they get a bit stretched, that sort of thing. That seems as the eyes and ears of the proper bobbies. That's why I joined. It's all about teamwork at the end of the day. We're a band of brothers, aren't we? We're all in it together. Brothers with blue blood in our veins. Hey, hey, here's one of our lads now. All right, mate. How are you? He must be new. He doesn't know the cold yet. They generally give us a bit of a bib. Yeah. Oh, what's going on there? Disabled space. One hour into the shift, and Vince Flanagan thinks he's about to witness a parking offence. No badge either, Vince. You can't park that in there, love. Disabled space. I'm not parking it in there, I'm just reversing so I can go out and, and turn left. No, you're not. If you drive in there, you're going to get a ticket, love. Now, you're going to have to go round the long way. I don't want to leave this. I don't make the laws, love. I only enforce them. <laughs> Liberty take. Vince is a natural-born CSO. He anticipated that situation before it even happened. It doesn't come from trading that. It comes from instinct. That's the one thing I'm hoping to learn from Vince. Instinct. You're gonna be there long, mate. Couple of hours, mate. Right. Of the 16 CSOs that patrol the Burnage Council Estate, seven are female. 28-year-old Josie Baines, from neighbouring Longsight, joined 18 months ago after failing her final exam to become a driving instructor. Vince partnered me on my first day. I remember us walking past my old school, and as we walked past the gates, some eight-year-old shouted, It's the bleeding filth! <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I've arrived. 35-year-old Trevor Harris has been working with us since February 2007. Hi girls, how you doing? You right? He decided to become a CSO after moving up from London, where he lost his job as a care assistant at a retirement home for the elderly. Thank you. Good luck to move on, thank you. The biggest buzz I get out of this job is when my radio goes off. The adrenaline rush is massive. My heart pounds, my, my hands go sweaty. The call could be anything. Harris 4130, missing wheelie bin, Sanford Crescent. Yeah, Harris 4130, received. Missing wheelie bin, Sanford Crescent, on our way. But it's not just wheelie bin crime that keeps the community support officers busy in Burnage. The regular police appreciate the CSO's role in cracking other forms of street crime. Most of us proper coppers feel indebted to the CSOs, in particular when it comes to enforcing the dog fouling laws. What we're dealing with here is a total lack of respect for the law. Oi, mush. That is an offence, allowing your dog to park its breakfast on a public walkway. 
Yeah, now sort it yeah, out or I'll take back. action. I've got to sort this geezer out. Yeah. What, what, what action's that, sorry, mate? They'll be taking his evidence. I could make a case out of that, you know. <laughs> mate, what the f do you want out of it? He's finished with it. So have I. So good luck, mate, yeah? It's all yours. It's all yours. Bloody oh, comedian. Oh, oh fuck. Expect the unexpected. That's what they told us on the training course, Vince. Yes, they did. And justice will prevail, they also told us. I know where that little <laughs> lives. Come on. Dog fouling's not just unsightly, you know. It's a health hazard. People get dog shit in their eyes, they can go blind. Mind you, there is a school of thought that says the gift of sight might be wasted on people who go around putting dog shit in their eyes. Special delivery. Have you seen they've put another one of them speed cameras on the edge of the red light district? That's a good, it's slowing them up, isn't it? It's, it's a good clever, thing. yeah, yeah, slows them up, then we get them for curb crawling, see? Two bites at the cherry that way. You get the girls and the driver, do you? You have right. both? About spotting the opportunities, lad. You stick with me, I'll show you how this game works. Rookie Duncan Harding has a dilemma on his hands. He's just found out that his father, Jimmy, has had an accident at home. But Duncan's half a mile away on the other side of town with Vince. Technically speaking, this is out of our jurisdiction, but we're going to act. What's happened is this. His dad's taken a flying header down the stairs. Bit of that, probably. I don't know. One of his neighbours has heard him shouting and has phoned him and told him. We're going to get ourselves over there and see what we can do to help because at the end of the day, we're brothers in arms, aren't we? And I'd like to think if it was one of my relatives in distress, Dougie would be there to help me out. Duncan. Yeah. Coppers? Who phoned the fucking police? It's your Duncan, Jimmy, Duncan. your son. Can you stand, Dad? Yeah. No, I can't, cos I'm pissed. I'm pissed because my son's a Copper, now get off me! Whoa, hang on. Is he going to be all right? Will it be all right? Of course I'll be all right. You Come pig. On, Jimmy. How's a f***ing minor? I'll always be all right. But you're a f***. And he's a f***. And I fought f like you on the picket line in Orgreave, 1984. Me and Arthur Scargill. We did the f***ing lot of you. And now he's a f***ing copper. How do you think that makes me feel? No, enough of that, Dad. Hang Dad, on now. I've got enough problems. One, one son as a policeman now. Hey, you all right, Dad? Come on, Jimmy. You all right, Dad? On, no. Jimmy. Why did you become a policeman? Well, they're not proper coppers, Jimmy. They're all like traffic wardens, aren't you? Aren't you? You're more like traffic wardens. Yeah. Just like them. Next week on CSO Manchester. Our response has gone in. Vince and Duncan find themselves in the middle of an armed siege. And Vince rushes in to help. All right, Bush, how I can do? Get the f out. Get the f out. You want your f head blown off. Oh, only asking. Respect. You give it, you get it. Is that wanker back with you, yeah? Yeah, that wanker's back with me. Safe over.